Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural live stream here on the Team Dovetail channel. My name is Leo Vasquez, and wanted to pop in and uh, try something uh, new uh, with our athletes, kind of call it like checking in uh, with our athletes. So tonight, we're going to be checking in with Rocky Carson, uh, but before we get to that, I want to say hello and welcome our very special guest, the owner, creator uh, and brainchild behind Team Dovetail, Mike Kink. And Mike, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you perfect, man. Great. After about five or six tests before we got here, <laughs> boom, it works. How about that? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well, man. Just been over here at the shop working, trying to get some uh, some cabinet work done. And uh, before you know it, it's 4 o'clock and then it's 4.30. And it's like, holy cow, where'd the time go? Um, hey, real quick, we... Uh, send the link back to to rock real quick he's having some troubles at his end um i don't know if you Just can email it. you send it again i did i got the text so uh okay. thanks uh, for, for taking care of that i know uh I, I i think i may have had a previous email but uh, yeah that'll that be our special guest tonight we'll uh we'll get to him in a second sounds good um while we're waiting on him hey listen um I want to get right down to it with you. Um, there's been a lot of chatter on the internet. Obviously, some people have been seeing a little bit more social media, um, uh, presence of the athletes. Um, but people are asking, what is Team Dovetail? You know, and people see that, you know, you're, you know, they see your team, you know, they see the players. Um, we'll get to them in a second. We have this really cool graphic we want to show of the team, but um, uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, social media presence and tournament presence and world championship presence and down at the Paolo experience presence. So uh, people are are wondering, what is Team Dovetail? Can you answer that for us? I think Team Dovetail is a, just a, it's a passion of, of mine and all the team members that are on there. And I think in, in racquetball in, in general, um, Oh, Mike, we lost you. You there, Mike? Lost your microphone, sorry. Not yet. Can you hear me, Mike? I cannot hear you yet. Well, while we're waiting for Mike to fix his microphone, I want to say hi to everybody watching online tonight. We're streaming on Facebook, and we're also streaming on YouTube. Um, uh, Dovetail has a YouTube channel as well, so look for, for some cool stuff to be coming there. Um, I want to say hi to Robert checking in online, Robert Stoner. Hi, Victoria. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we're going to be joined shortly by Rocky Carson, who's going to check in tonight and talk to us about the World Championships coming up. Uh, in San Luis Potosi, Mexico, uh, August the 19th through the 27th at the uh, La Loma Club. You know, I had to do my background on Rocky before he got here tonight. So, uh, yes, YouTube. Hi, Sam. Sam Schultz, member of Team Dovetail, uh, checking in tonight. Hopefully, we'll see a lot of the Team Dovetail members in here tonight. And uh, sorry, I'm looking at the schedule of events uh, coming up for Team Dovetail. It's pretty lengthy. Um, but tonight will be Rocky Carson. Rocky's going to tell us all about his history uh, playing at the World Championships. It's very intriguing. You know, um, I don't want to spoil it before Rocky gets here, but uh, Rocky has a lot of championships. Under, under, uh, we'll see, see if we can bring, we can uh, bring uh, Mike back in. Mike, Mike, back in. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? I can. I can. All righty. Rocky's trying to uh, uh, to log in now. So I guess I didn't have my phone on my phone on mute or whatever, so that he couldn't interrupt the 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 link. Here we go. I Here we go. We I think we have him. While we have, we have an opportunity, let's go ahead and bring, bring, bring him in. I was just talking about the world championship experience, but let's bring him in now. Rocky, Rocky, can you hear us? Can you hear us? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's happening? What's happening? Well, I'm. Just 
Nice. So you're actually at the gym. Where are you training at? Where are you at right now? Uh, just uh, right now, I'm at an LA Fitness here in uh, Southern Cal. Yeah. Stuff, so really enjoying getting on the court. I got Josh Tucker hitting with me. I don't know if you guys remember him on the Pro Tour. Absolutely. Stuff. Him and I uh, competed in juniors as well as uh, a lot of outdoor stuff. And we also competed together one year uh, at uh, multiple years together in nationals and, and junior nationals as well. I got Majid back here warming up. Um, I got a game in already and uh, looking to get a few more in. Actually, a lot more in. Hey, so um, I, I, I want to get my questions out of the way. You know, I did my uh, my world championship homework uh, before you got on. And uh, going all the way back to 2008 in Ireland, um, when you beat Jack in the finals, uh, every year up until 2018. And then 18, you played doubles. Uh, 22 there, or 20, there was no championship. And here we are in 22. So the span between 2008 and 2000 and, and 2008, 2000 and now, um, how, how much you think so many matches uh, uh, and special moments? I mean, what's going to stand out the most for you up till now? Well, you look at, you know, you got a lot of uh, great opportunities I've been able to have in the sport. And uh, very uh, fortunate to represent our country as many years as I have and uh, another one uh, this year. Um, anytime you're representing your country, it stands out. Uh, that definitely is gigantic. Wife actually, wife actually texted, texted me a quick little uh, picture uh, yesterday of myself and Kane and Alvaro on the podium of uh, one of the Pan American uh, championships. Uh, I think I was probably about 20, 22 years old. It's the first one I won and uh for for the u.s and uh, that definitely stood out right there when she sent that to me and stuff so i thought that was pretty cool but anytime you win a world championship that's gigantic it's uh it's the uh, you know it's, you're the world champion and you can't you, you can never take that away from a from a player from an individual and uh you know to be able to have uh, competed in as many as i've had but to be able to win five of those is gigantic to me um it really means a lot and i really would like to try to compete and win a six one um i went for doubles a doubles uh world championship a few years back with uh sudsy and we came pretty close i uh, lost alvaro and daniel and they played a great match to finish and stuff but it was a uh um it was a battle so you know i look forward to this week and uh getting it started and hopefully uh, have an opportunity to uh, you know go go for another one Hey, I heard, I heard uh, and I'm sure you've done it on more than one occasion because I've seen pictures of more than one occasion. And um, uh, people talk about uh, how you inspire them by taking out, you know, you've won a lot of, you know, a lot of tournaments and titles and stuff, but um, you bring your world championship medals to like, to like a dinner or like when, you know, when you have uh, friends over, I mean, um, what do you try to, what do you try to inspire uh by doing for to people to show them you know well i definitely want to inspire the the younger players to become to want to have that drive to be great um as well as uh the juniors and anybody that wants to push themselves to the to the limit because you know that's what we why we love sports is you get to see how great you can be and uh i'm looking forward to uh challenging myself again this next week and, and trying to do the same thing see how great i can be it's uh you know i'm in a different stage of my career than i was when i was in my late teens to mid twenties and thirties. And, and it's neat to still be able to say, I'm still competing at the top. Um, so, you know, I feel like, you know, in some ways that's an inspiration, you know, you got Alvaro as well, still competing. And obviously Kane, Kane and I have grown up together on tour. He's still competing. So it's neat to be able to see this. And when I was 30, I was thinking, what's my retirement plan going to be and stuff. And I, I maybe this is it, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, and then I, you know, obviously to be able to have those medals and share them with others and hopefully to, to, to hopefully see that, hey, these things are achievable and stuff. I want you guys to be able to have that. I don't want you to have it at my expense, <laughs> but I do want to see a lot of those great players to be able to experience those great moments as well like I have um, and stuff. One of the funny things and one of the things I enjoy doing with some of my racquetball guys, especially the guys I trained with at um, – you know, like Josh Tuckers and stuff. Because if ever, they ever come to the house, I, I might spread a few of those around the house and <laughs> racquetball magazine covers out there. And 
and have fun with those guys as well. Like, oh, did you guys see that? <laughs> Somebody in the chat, I want to get to some chat questions before uh, we let you go. I know you're training. Um, Samuel Schultz in the chat says, Rocky Carson, what's your favorite match you've ever played? You say that again? What's your favorite match you've ever played? Oh, man. So many. I mean, uh, I got doubles matches that I could say were my favorite just because of the way we won uh, uh, with the partners that have won. Robert Hoff and I won one where... We came back, I think, from like six or seven match points mm -hmm. um, against Albro and Daniel in an outdoor finals out in Huntington. My first world title was gigantic. I played Jack, and he had won, I think, one or two of them. And I uh, I was competing, and I think I just finished number one that year on the IRT. And um, we're competing, and he, he squeaked the uh, first game by me by, I think, 15, 13. And he had match point, I think, 11, 15, 14, 11, or 14 nine and i came back i think after five match points and won that one and then he had another three or four or so in the second the tiebreaker and i won that and not only that i had my parents with me on that so i mean that was gigantic um i felt uh, i mean that was that was big for me I and mean, your first world title and then uh you know anytime you're winning the u.s open it's gigantic um and that was that was another one versus jack in a in a four game match um you know, I, I will say this. One of the biggest things, I always look at Brian Hawks as almost untouchable on the outdoor courts. And the first time I played him, all I could think about was, hey, just keep the game tight. If you can keep the game tight, you have a chance. And so uh, I ended up uh, playing. And I lost the first game, 15-13. I was so disappointed. I was like, that was my chance. And the second game I came out and I was on fire and won that one, uh, I think like 15-9 or so, and won the, won the match on a – you know, playing outdoors on a diving kill shot outdoors to win it. And uh, that was a gigantic one because, you know, Brian's a, a you know, not just a, an amazing racquetball player and, uh, you know, considered to be what, at one point the world's fittest athlete, but also a great friend and, um, you know, in my opinion, the best ever play outdoors. So um, to win that one was, was gigantic as well. Hey, tell us about the La Loma Club. Tell us about the La Loma Club. You know what? I think I'm getting a little bit of um, funky feedback. Hey, guys, I'm going to get back on the court. I'm going to get ready for Worlds. Team Dovetail, thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Leo, thank you for everything. Um, that's where I belong. Get ready to start getting, you know, getting set for, uh, for the Worlds. I think you guys can watch it on the International Racquetball Federation starts on like friday i think friday or saturday so looking forward to it hey thank you so much for having me on you guys thank you rocky we'll see you soon thanks so much all right there he is everybody rocky carson mike are you back how's your audio no can't hear you you missed a great well i'm sure you could hear it uh but yeah that was very cool to hear from rocky thanks rocky for checking in you know we we um I don't want to say we wanted to try to do this at the last minute, but we did want to, you know, get on the air and we'll be doing more of these with every team dovetail athlete uh, tonight. Rocky Carson, thanks for checking in with us during the workout. Hopefully we can get uh, Mike's audio fix. He can come back because, you know, we do want to get to the question and people are asking, what is team dovetail? People want to know how it started. Where did it come from? You know, uh, you know, obviously it's a passion um and uh and there is a mission and uh hopefully mike will be able to tell us that mike let me see let me see if i can let me see if we can bring let mike restart and come back in um don't forget world championships coming up august the 19th through the 27th really quick while mike resets i just want to remind you guys the u.s delegation uh is made up of 11 uh singles obviously will be uh Rocky Carson um, and Alejandro Landa. Mike, are you there? Nope, can't hear you. Cannot hear you. Not yet. Uh, we'll just keep rolling until we can get we can get Mike's audio fixed. And then the doubles will be Charlie Pratt and Sam Bredenbeck. They will be playing doubles for Team USA. Uh, women's singles will be Erica Mania and Ronda Rasich. 
uh, and then mixed doubles, uh, something really, really cool right now. Um, let me see, Mike. I don't have you muted. No, no, no. I don't. There you go. I can hear you. There you go. Hey, welcome back. Thank you. Appreciate it. You could hear everything though, right? I could hear everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I know this, you know, like I try to tell everybody, we, we, we wanted to get the first one under our feet and Rocky was kind enough to say, Hey, you know, um, you know, he's the, one of the original team members, uh, of team dovetail. And, uh, I know you guys talk a lot and, uh, you know, he said, yeah, you know, what are you guys going to do? And we, you know, we told him our little format. We want to be checking in with our athletes, um, uh, before competitions and sometimes, um, maybe during and, and after. So uh, thanks for getting in touch with Rocky and, and, and yeah. making it happen. I'm glad you got to be here. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, you know, it's an it's experience. Uh, first time setting this up and getting it running. And uh, obviously I need to get a little bit different equipment for here at the shop. But when you're out working, then you run in and you realize what time it is. You, you just you throw your phone in and you and you start going. Um, Hey, I saw there's a couple of questions, uh, you know, one of the guys had asked about string tension and stuff like that. Do you want to, you want to go ahead and answer that? I believe we, you have. We do. We were about to get, uh, Rocky, uh, to make the, to, to announce the winners. We have, uh, we're going to give away actually a couple winners. We didn't have anybody get it exactly right, Yeah, but we wanted to have fun with it. And so we're going to give away a couple team dovetail shirts to the people that got the closest. All righty. Uh, but yeah, go ahead tell everybody. Cause. Uh, what was it? 44 pounds, 44 and, pounds and uh 16 gauge, 16 gauge mega blast, mega blast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that was our question from Daryl. Yeah. Local stringer in Calgary, Alberta. Thank you for awesome. the question, Daryl. Yeah. Thank you very much. So before we go, Mike, and, and while we got an yeah. awesome connection, um, people are, are wanting to know right before we, uh, uh, got disconnected and Rocky came in right away was, you know, what is team dovetail? Let people know, because people are asking, we want to make sure that we get the right information out there. You know, what is team dovetail? A uh, team dovetail is uh, like I was saying before, it's a passion of mine. Racquetball is a passion of mine. Like, like many folks that are out there, uh, watching and playing. Um, I was fortunate after, after the kids left the house, kind of told the wife that, you know, I wanted to do something. We uh, restarted up a business and business is doing pretty well. And I just wanted to give back. And uh, mm -hmm. this was my way of giving back. I started with uh, Rocky Carson and then Sam Samuel Schulz and uh, Sebastian Franco. And then the, you know, the list goes on and on and on. I think we got 10 or 11 players now. And uh, we're going to add a couple more juniors. Uh, the juniors is very important to me. If we don't have a juniors, we might as well just, you know, pack it up and just go out and play some racquetball once in a while. And, you know, eventually the sport will be dead. It doesn't have to die. We just have to get the family back involved. We have to get juniors involved. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're, they're doing it in pickleball because the families are out there. They're competing together. They're, they're enjoying the time out there. We have outdoor courts. We have indoor courts. You know, we can replicate some of what they've done. Basically, what they replicate is what we were doing in the, the late 70s and the 80s. So there's a there's an opportunity there. It's not dead. Um, but the more we talk about being dead, the more it will be dead. We have to talk about the positive things that are happening and stuff. And one of those is uh, what we call the dovetail mission. And the dovetail mission is getting juniors back onto the court. Um, and that's really, really important to me. Um, Leo and I have been working on on this project for a little while now, uh, gone back and forth. And I think over the next, I'm hoping within the next week or so we can roll out some more information on that. Um, we've got our first clinic that's going to happen in, in Florida. Um, we're still setting up the date, making sure everything works for everybody, but look for that announcement soon. Um, but as far as what team dovetail is, it's, it's all of us. It's, it's stronger together. I chose the word dovetail because it's part of my business name, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really about racquetball growing, getting back to the grassroots. Um, I'm not asking the USAR to, to do anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the IRT to, to do anything or the LPRT. As a matter of fact, I help all those people. And 
I've got a vision. I've shared it with, with some people and, you know, Leo obviously being one of them and we're going to try to make it happen. And I'm not going to be that person that says you should have, could have, would have. Yeah. We're, we're just doing what we can. And guess what? We're probably going to make some mistakes. Some of it's not going to work. Uh, but Hey, if some of it does work, we're going to take steps in the right direction. But I just don't want to be that guy saying, Oh, I wish I would have. I'm the guy right now that's saying, let's do it and let's give it it, you know, let's give it our all because yeah. that's, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm giving it my all. What, what, you know, people are, are you know, still going to ask though, you know, what is it? What is your, you know, you've, you've given us a little bit of background and you know what you want to do, but you know, right. what are like, what are like immediate goals? What are, you know, what do you, what do you want to see? You know, what's going to, what's going to be coming out of team dovetail. You already said you get, I got what a junior clinic uh, coming up in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Um, will well, team go, go ahead. I hope to take this, this junior clinic and make it a national type event uh, where we have, uh, we have people that are training juniors throughout the country under one format. Mm -hmm. um, we've taken a lot of time and we've talked to a lot of people about these formats and how we can make them work and replicating what some of the success that other people are having throughout the country mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to tie it to, uh, you know, a little bit of money. If, if we can get some coaches and have, you know, give them a little stipend so that they can, they can do what they need. If, if kids need rackets, we can, you know, obviously get them some rackets. We've worked with a couple of the racket sponsors now. Or I'm sorry, racket companies, and uh, you know everybody seems to be a, be on board with what we're trying to do, and mm -hmm. that's trying to get juniors back on the court. Uh, we're going to have a couple announcements that we've signed some new juniors. Um, some names you might be familiar with, others you may not. Um, and quite honestly, I'm hoping that some of these people you haven't heard of. We want to get you know we want to get the names out there of the people that maybe you haven't heard of because they're the, they're the next generation of racquetball players. Mm -hmm. And the more that we can get at them playing, the better off we'll all be. Um, I want to see tournaments that have, you know, 20 juniors at them, 30, 40, 50 juniors at them at mm -hmm. regular tournaments. I'm not talking national tournaments. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we're going to do that is start engaging, engaging with the schools, engaging with, uh, with people that are willing to volunteer some of their time to, to help coach. And we'll try to provide everything else that, that they need. If somebody needs something, reach out to us. We'll, we'll figure out a way. I don't have endless pockets. Yeah. What I do have is a lot of connections and a lot of people that have made a promise that if we do something with juniors, they'll be on board. And, you know, we're starting. And, you know, next week we'll, we'll let you know more about the, the little clinic and uh, what we'll follow up with that clinic in Florida next week. Now it's not happening next week, but you'll have the information next week on what we're doing. Are you, I'll ask you some questions. You don't have to answer yeah. them because that's just me. Uh, you willing to, are you willing to, to share here on this show who you're signing or is it too early? Uh, yeah, let's, let's wait. I want to, I want to roll them out the way that I've rolled everybody else out. Yeah. And then, you know, putting a little Facebook post together, introduce them a little bit that way. And then what we can do is bring them on to the show and let them talk and you can hear from them. I would love but, that. You know, every one of them is under 18 years old. None of them are professionals. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's two girls. There's one guy. And I, I can tell you, they're very, very passionate about the sport mm -hmm. and very intelligent. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting them rolled out. We, we've already have commitment with them. And it's just uh, it was a busy week for me at work, so I couldn't do as much as I had hoped. But uh, I'll, I'll leave. Boys, one girl. What part of the yeah. country? Any more hints? Um, you know me; I like suspense. Yeah, so we got some. We got one in the Midwest. There you go. And uh, we got two out on the uh, out on the East Coast, or I'm nice. sorry, out on the West Coast. Sorry, West Coast. Nice. Yeah. What, I mean, what do you look for in a player? You know, besides the traditional, you know, I'm playing a bunch of tournaments and or maybe some don't do that. I don't know. What do you look I for? In a player? I, I really don't care if you playing a bunch of tournaments or winning a bunch of tournaments. I mean, hey, winning's great. It's it's nice. But I really, you know, I'm, I really think that it's better to have a good person and somebody that's passionate about what they're doing and, and willing to 
to learn and, and to listen to people and, and be respectful. Um, the winning will come if they love the sport and they practice and they, they do what, you know, what we can help them with. We've got, you know, some, some of the best players in the world on our team that have made themselves accessible to our junior program. Um, they'll have an opportunity to win, Mm -hmm. but I want them to be better people than, you know, better racquetball players. Um, the racquetball is a side part of, you know, what we're doing here, creating a generation that loves racquetball, that loves, you know, getting onto the court and hitting and, and all that and can help grow the sport at their club is more important than how many, you know, championships that they win. Hey, a couple questions before I let you go. Uh, I saw uh, Joey Logan giving you a shout out at the, uh, I don't even, I can't even say it. It's like a tongue twister. The, the, the windy city three <laughs> wall brawl. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with that? Okay, so Joey, Joey and I go back a long time. I'm originally from Illinois. Uh, one of my nemesis playing on the on the court. He always seemed like he got the best of me. Um, but Joey's, you know, Joey's trying to do the right thing up there and host a you know a nice tournament. And he's he's been growing it over the years. Um, I want to say this is seven or eight years um, that he's been been doing it. We had Rocky out there a couple of years ago. I was I went out there with him. Um, you know real nice facility they're they're really going to be adding uh updating it they've got a grant and stuff that's been in the process and they're looking at getting that all updated but joey gives you know gives back to the sport he's uh you know pro kinetics guy he likes to you know to talk rackets and likes to host a you know a good tournament with good food you know all those things that that people talk about i believe that you know joey's joey's doing wish we would have had a little bit more numbers out there this year um but again, racquetball is trying to find its footing. Um, I love the outdoor, the outdoor game. I'm not very good at it. Yeah, I haven't. I don't play it enough. Um, but I love going to the tournaments. I I probably enjoy going to those tournaments more than maybe some of these indoor tournaments that that we go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, so before we wrap up, um, lots of lots of team dovetail going on in racquetball. Obviously, yeah. with so many players on your team, somebody's yeah. playing somewhere. You know, we've got right. the championships coming up. We've got U.S. Open. Um, we have an IRT event in Maryland. Um, we have the three wall ball uh, championships in Vegas. Um, and then we start getting into November and December. Um, do you want to announce anything that you've got coming up in November? Uh, we, got a little, we got a little tournament that we're going to be uh, that we're going to be putting on an IRT event. Yeah. Uh, it was the first one that I had. Uh, had been a part of last year as a, as a title sponsor, uh, uh-huh. in Sarasota, we had, we had called it Sarasota open last year. Uh, this year we're going to call it the dovetail open. And, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping to, to get some juniors out there. I had an open invitation to any junior that could make it out here that we would, uh, find lodging for them and, uh, pay for their, their entry fee and stuff. Huh. And, I think we've got four or five right now that have taken me up on that. And again, a couple of them are, you know, named players that people have heard of. And, you know, a couple of them aren't. And I get excited about people that I don't know who they are. Yeah. And they come out and they want to play and they're willing to make, you know, to make that commitment. Um, we're looking at IRT singles and doubles. Um, we're not fully committed on the doubles yet. We need to raise a little bit more money for that. I am not fully funding the whole tournament. So, you know, I'm not the type to ask for donations. I, I try to figure it out one way or the other. But if anybody's interested, they can, you know, they can always reach out to us. Um, but we'll, we're, we're going to do the best that we can, put on a, a good tournament. Uh, we got five courts at the Sarasota Club. Uh, we got to finish wrapping up all the details with that. Um, looking at probably having a hundred to 115 people there, maybe, maybe a little bit more, um, and try to put on the best, the best show that we can put on. Nice. I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hold you to having the new, uh, the new signees on the show. Maybe, maybe that could be our next show once we, you know, get everything, uh, in place and, uh, I think that'd be cool because I know, um, you know, how strong your mission is for the juniors. Yeah. So, you know, we can reach out to them and, uh, you know, make sure they're comfortable coming on here and, and just chatting with us a little bit. Um, I don't think hey, we have, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm going to give you one hint. All uh -oh. right. Uh -oh. I have to give you this hint because this person's in the in the chat box right now. Oh. And uh, well, Sam so, Schultz is in the chat box, but yeah, Sam, Sam's he's already the, on the team. He's a veteran on the team already. But um, yeah, there's somebody else. There's somebody else in there that uh, has who was a lot. The second of person you signed. We know you signed Rocky number one. Who was number two? Do you remember who number two was? Yeah, it was uh, it was Sam. Was Sam. it? Wow, he is veteran. Yeah, he gets a patch. Yeah, and you go, you go from the nice uh, screen shirt now. You know, after something, you get a patch now. <laughs> um. So yeah, then it was uh, Sebastian Franco, and uh, Sebastian uh, Franco was just he's a great guy, yeah. um, and a dad, and an awesome and, dad at that, and and a father, and. Uh, He's just got a game that I, I truly enjoy enjoy watching and stuff. And they get some help from uh, Team Zurich out there. and Yeah, Francisco. Uh, Francisco and, and I, you know, we, we talk quite a bit. And, you know, he's trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to do the right thing. It's not a competition with us. And, you know, it, it's all about making racquetball better. Um, and, you know, we're getting more and more people reaching out to say how they can help. And we're trying to figure that out. Um this is how hard is it? How hard is it to subsidize? And I don't know if that's the correct word yeah. or expensive hobby, because yeah. I, I see a pattern of our, you know, big names in the sport that have come through and they all have also, they also have a business. Yeah. You know, Keith Miner, obviously everybody knows KMW Gutterman, uh, yep. a very successful business. Uh, you know, Randy Root uh, yep. at Root Dental Lab, a very successful business. You know, Francisco Fajardo with his construction business, you with your countertop and cabinet business. I mean, is it hard? Is it easy? Is it fun? Is it stressful? I mean, you you, you got to worry about your business, but you got to keep that going because you love racquetball so much and you're putting so much into it. It's it's a challenge. Um, you know, we don't have the biggest staff here, so I have to do, you know, still do a lot of the work. Mm -hmm. And make sure you know, make sure it's done. Gets done. I'm I'm very hands on with with the company, mm -hmm. um, but you know I, I have I have high hopes for racquetball. And like I said earlier, it's just about doing what I can I can do. Yeah. Um, we we put a lot into it, and you know I think I'm one of the few guys that have actually hired people to help me run you know Team Dovetail. Mm -hmm. I've got. I've got people on the payroll that are, that are helping to do this. Now I don't sell a product. I'm not selling the players. Um, you know, we once in a while sell a couple of t-shirts here and there. Yeah. But like Robert Stoner said, he loves the shirts. <laughs> what if somebody wants a shirt? How do they have, what would they do? Well, what do you call it? We're going to have some at the U S open. We're working on the website uh, and we're working on a partner that, that can help us produce the shirts a little bit quicker and maybe a little bit, a uh, little, little more in colors and stuff. We do some of our own sublimation work here at, at the, uh, at the shop. And yeah, but some of them I think turn out pretty nice. Some of them we still need to work on. Um, but like you say, it's a hobby that's turned into, into more of a business for me. Um, but a business that, you know, right now we're not collecting any money. Yeah. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm I'm willing to to do that. Uh, you know, I look at I look up to the guys like what you know mentioned earlier, Keith Miner and Randy Root and uh, Francisco. You know, those those guys have all all impacted me. And there's there's many more out there. Mike Coulter. I was going to say Mike Coulter with Leo Clematis. Yeah, Leo. Leo Dave is ready. Uh, man, you're hitting on a couple of names there that are that are right there in my heart. Uh, yeah. Dave Negretti is one of the first guys to give me a, you know, a rack of all lesson. Um, you know, I saw what he used to do up there in Chicago at the Halloween classic and what a great event that was. And, you know, I, I don't think I can duplicate that down here this year, but I, I tell you what, when you talk to the older pros and stuff, that was the tournament, you know, to go to yeah. uh, Dave and his brothers put on a, on a great show and, with Leo's help up there, Leo was a, you know, was and still is a, a great supporter of, uh, of racquetball. I know these are names that most people don't know, but they are huge impacts in racquetball. Yeah. Yeah. Financially and, yep. you know, just keeping it going and, um, 
hey, before we let you go, though, we didn't get a chance yep. to talk about it tonight, but I put it up on the screen, the hot topic, uh, because yep. we're trying to coordinate everybody together. But how excited were you when you found out that Kane and Rocky are going to be playing at three wall ball in Vegas? I think it's I think it's pretty cool. I think it's great for the sport. Um, I think it's great for Rocky. I think it's great for Kane. Um, you're bringing those two legends together. Uh, both still playing the game, playing at a very, very, very high level. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I, I talked to Keith. Keith is the, the person behind this. This is not a, a dovetail thing. I w- you know, I wish I could say it was, but honestly, hey, man, Keith is doing some great things in racquetball. He's not, you know, he hasn't made himself as visible as perhaps I have. Um, and, you know, we've, we've taken a little different, different path to that. But believe me, I, I ask him questions. I call him up and say, hey, Keith, what would you do? What do you, you know, what do you think? You've been doing this a lot longer than I have. And uh, it, he is a great guy. I've also reached out to Randy Root a couple of times. And mm-hmm. him and I spoke about a couple of things. These are, you know, these these guys are philanthropists. They are giving back to the sport with that, with, you know, with the knowledge of they're really not going to get a lot out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not building anybody's ego. It's not building my ego. It's not building Keith's ego. We're just trying to do what's best for the for the sport. Um, I just happened to take a little different approach than those guys. I wanted yeah. to. I wanted to try to get more publicity out there, not so much for me, but if we can make this team concept work and, you know, the, the way the players interact with each other and when they go to tournaments, they know they got somebody that they can can rely on. It, it's made a huge difference. And if you go to any of our events, the, you know, the outdoor events where the whole teams are there, mm-hmm. I think you can see how close knit of a family we are. And you, you'll get that opportunity this year, Leo, going to to Vegas and you know being part of that family out there i think it'll be awesome can't wait can't wait um all right so before we let you go mike um i think i answered pretty you answered pretty much all uh questions that i had this was pretty cool i hope we can do more of these like you said we had talked about having uh you know the athletes on every week we can check in with them we can get them on for 10 or 15 minutes um so there's your all's warning everybody on the team uh, it's, it, it's going to be great. You know, we've got some fun things planned. Um, and we're doing this for the fans. Obviously you guys know, um, we are on Facebook, we're on Instagram and now YouTube will be adding to our YouTube channel, um, very soon. But, um, I think, I think, uh, you would agree that, you know, our mission is obviously the athletes. Yep. Um, so people can get to know more about them. You know, these, those infographics that came out, those are, those are really cool when you can, see their you know their dream vacation and what they're doing in school you know lalo's uh i heard there's a picture coming out where he's got all of his uh pilot stuff on yeah yeah he's he's excited about it he he talked about it you know i had the opportunity to have him down here for about four weeks he helped in the shop got his hands dirty um was able to uh see a little bit of what we do here and i think he realizes that uh this type of work's probably not for him so uh, being a pilot is is right up his alley. I look forward to being able to hop on a plane with him someday and and fly someplace. But he's got a he's got a goal. He's uh, he's definitely reaching for it. He he did start classes, and uh, yeah, we're excited about that. It's a it's a big move. It's a big move for him. Hey, he's gonna me... he's, he is still going to be playing. Nice. Hey, really quick, because, you know, we are talking about what is Team Dovetail, and, and, yeah. and we're going to wrap this up in a second. We get to keep it under an hour, which is great. Uh, <laughs> you know, we've already heard about Rocky being the first guy, and you see that graphic there on the screen. Kind of go down the list just really fast and just and just tell us a little something about each person. Um, so after I signed a couple of the guys and stuff, um, we had – put me on the spot here. I got to remember, remember everything here. So we ended up with Andre or Andreas uh-huh. Acuna. Uh-huh. Uh, Francisco from team Zurich came to me and said, Hey, we need to, we need to team up and help this guy. Uh-huh. He's a great young man and uh, he's got a lot of potential and uh, probably use a little bit of help. And so him and I went together and, you know, uh-huh. we both help him in, in certain areas and, uh, I think Andreas is a great addition to the team. He also spent some time with me down at the house and stuff. And he is a very intelligent, 
smart, analytical guy uh, on the court. He will he will be in the top ten. I, you know, he'll be in the top eight before you know it. He really, really is is getting there. Um, right before we signed him, um, we ended up we signed Lalo, um, mm-hmm. and Lalo and Rocky ended up playing in last year's uh, tournament in Sarasota. I remember that. And they won the finals. And that was, for me, that was, it was awesome. It's a highlight. I've got the, uh, the bracket and stuff, the big bracket that the IRT has and stuff. I got it here in my, my showroom. And Mm -hmm. I just, uh, it's something that will mean a lot. Lalo ended up taking second in that, uh, tournament losing Mm -hmm. to Conrado. Um, but it was a, it was an, an awesome match. Um, really that's, that's probably where it started put me over the edge a little bit wanting to help more because I could see what, what a difference that it was making. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, it was a good feeling. So, you know, I start talking, I need juniors. I need, you know, I need to have some females on the team and, and Kalani and Holly uh, came on board right after Andreas actually. Uh-huh. Uh, I met both of them at a uh, tournament in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ended up signing, ended up signing both of them. And then uh, Sudzy Monchak had a tournament in, in Florida, drove down, met with them. I'll be honest, I was a little hesitant at first. I didn't know how to deal with, with the female and the women and how they're going to approach things. I always understood the men. I played baseball and yeah. had, had those sports experiences and stuff. But it's been a, it's been a blessing to have them on the team. They're, they're, great they're they work hard they train hard um so yeah i'm just real real happy with that mm-hmm. uh, you want me to continue with everybody we're almost done uh yeah. then you went up so, you got well you got the the juniors and then yeah. andre yeah so we ended up with um dj uh, i saw dj play at beach bash uh-huh. and, uh, he ends up winning beach bash and i was like man i want i want this kid on the team he's a he's a good kid yeah and uh, you know, I approached him right away, just off the cuff. I was like, Hey man, I want, I want you part of the team. And, and, you know, he, thankfully he said yes. And, you know, he's got a good core group of guys down there in Texas and in San Antonio that, you know, he gets trained with, gets to hit with DLR a little bit and yeah. Ali. And, you know, there's just some top athletes down there. Uh, Naomi's down there. It's another, you know, young junior that we've signed and we help out. Um, then Maria Renee, uh, you know, I wasn't at the time really thinking I was going to add another female and, mm-hmm. you know, her, and I got to talking and, and she's just a, another, I, I can't say it. Everybody on the team's great people. Yeah. Um, she's very, she's got a, a huge heart. She's big into the juniors. She mm-hmm. will definitely be helping us with our, our junior program. Uh, she's given us some insight on that. And, uh, yeah, just absolutely, absolutely love it. And then our last professional player that we signed was Andreas Perea. And, uh, you know, another guy's number two on the IRT right now, uh, really works hard. Uh, him and I communicate very well together. He's got a business mind. We talk business outside of just racquetball business, just business in general. He, he said, uh, he does tennis shoes, some sneakers and, you know, actually sent me a pair and I, I absolutely love them. I, I don't know if I would have bought them, but, <laughs> and, uh, he wouldn't take a dime for them and they're, they are great shoes. I, I absolutely love them. Yeah. Um, and then I think that covers about everybody. Yeah, that was everybody on the team. Yeah. I mean, we already talked about Sam enough, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sam, Sam's my boy. He, uh, you know, when you, when you start with somebody and they're, they're 18, 19 years old and you, you start to see him develop into a, a young man and, you know, he's, he's trying to figure out some things that he wants to do with his life. And, you know, he still wants to train hard and, and do that and, you know, try to go to college and have a job and, and, and all those things. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's a guy that I, I try to look out for and try to do the best I can with. Not that I don't with everybody, but everybody has different connections. I try to treat everybody fair. I, I communicate with everybody when they're playing. Um, that's just, that's who I am. 
um, I want them to know that there's a support system there. And that's why we're building this is to, to have a support system. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. Hopefully people will be able to go back and watch this. They can uh, listen to the part about where uh, you talked about Team Dovetail came from, uh, where you're going. Um, and hopefully you can check in with us. Like I said, um, the, you know, we'll be doing these with the athletes. We'd love for you to come in as well, just as a guest to kind of chime in. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you did start uh, Team Dovetail, yeah. so I think you deserve a, a spot at the table. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, we're, you know, hopefully uh, soon if we can get you know, the new signees, I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, if we could hear yeah, from we'll them. Yeah, we'll definitely hear from them and stuff, but I really don't want the spotlight on me. It's, it's really about getting it on the players. I know that I, you know, that I started it, but it's not who starts, it's who finishes. And let's get these, let's get the players and the, the amateurs some recognition for everything that they're doing. And let's figure out how we can make this sport grow. Let's stop talking about how negative it is and, you know, how much it costs to have court space. It costs a lot to have pickleball space, too. It's actually a bigger a bigger court. It just have more people playing right now. And we just have to figure out how to get more people into the clubs. And I'm going to end it this way. If we can get more professionals or, you know, and I'm not talking high, high-end professionals, but people that can coach and teach racquetball at facilities, the sport will grow. OK, if you have an athlete or if you have an aerobics instructor at a club, the, the aerobics instructor is expected to bring people in to teach. All right. If we have a racquetball pro at the club, a racquetball pro is there to help bring people in and teach them the game and to try to develop that love for the game. If clubs don't have racquetball pros, how can the sport grow? I, I well just got I just got to kind of end it there. Well said. Mike, thanks for uh, putting this together. Thanks for getting Rocky on the show. And yep. uh, look forward to the next episode of uh, Checking In with Team Dovetail. That, that sounds great, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Good night.